This video is the second of a three-part series exploring photographic composition. I'll place the link to the first video and then later to the third video in the description below. They can be viewed in any order because I cover different topics in each. The list of techniques discussed will also appear in the copy below. Through examples I hope to show how the conventions of composition can contribute to making strong photographs, but also how these conventions can be broken. If one follows rules or conventions too closely, your photographs will land up being sterile or boring. But it's a useful exercise to study images in order to investigate how the photographer has constructed the image to create form or balance. As a photographer, the aim is not to hold these ideas of composition in mind when you're photographing, but rather to train one's mind to look for a balance of the elements within one's frame in whatever situation you find yourself. You don't even need a camera to practice this. You just put an imaginary frame around any scene and move it about to see what options you have available. So composition theory should be seen more as something that you want to learn, but not something that you want to be rigid about. OK, I'm going to change over now and look at some individual photographs. The use of line is interesting. The psychology behind vertical lines is that Vertical lines inspire a sense of solidity, success, power, authority. Whereas horizontal line is more calming, a flat scene is less dynamic. And in this case, the photographer Charles Ebbets has used the horizontal line to emphasize that the workers are taking a break from building the Rockefeller Plaza and eating their lunch. There are lots of other compositional elements like splitting the frame in two and allowing the background to almost blur into uniformity. Diagonal lines bring disruptive energy. They suggest a feeling of movement or direction, and they can also provide instability. In this beautiful photograph of Grand Central Station, the diagonal shafts of light actually result in a feeling of a cathedral, but it adds a dynamic element to the image in terms of composition. This image by Yusuf Gadalka also brings in a very strong diagonal element and shifts the image from being a fairly average scene into something which is fairly dynamic. So you have a diagonal shooting off here and he's left space on the right hand side so your eye can shift in the direction of the motion. When you start looking closer there's also other lines moving one's eye towards the right of the frame. In this case, man rays use compositional techniques in order to transform this close-up image of a woman's face into a serialistic statement. He's used the diagonal, and he's also used repetition. These little balls to represent teardrops that are repeated in the center of the eye and also in the nose. This is another famous photograph, raising the flag on Iwo Jima. He's used the diagonal in order to emphasize this dynamic and significant moment in history. Leading line is a very commonly used technique to draw the viewer's attention towards the subject matter. In this case, there are multiple lines moving in towards the center. This image is using diminishing perspective as a method of producing leading lines. Diminishing perspective takes advantage of the fact that objects that are closer to the lens have a broader proportion and this diminishes with depth. This famous Lewis Hine picture really uses the diminishing perspective in order to draw our eyes to the young girl working in the cotton mill. Leading lines can take on many forms. In this case, it's a back-to-front S-curve, leading us towards the mountain range in the background. This is a very nice spiral leading line, taking you down to the main subject, and the photographer has also employed motion. 
This photograph has a similar structure to the Cartier-Bresson photograph that I discussed earlier. But in this case, the leading lines are moving this way, there, around the edge of the road, down the stairway, and also the man and the bicycle are blurred by motion. I really like this more subtle leading line by Kudelka. He's gone for three figures, but one's eye is led through this pattern on the background from the left through to the guy on the center and then down to this child over here. This is a nice simple leading line as we're moved closer to the subject by the handrail and also by the top of the wall. Another line compositional tool is what is known as implied line. In this case, you have a clear movement in this direction. This young boy is emphasizing that line. You have a vertical line dividing the image almost in two, and the one-way sign pointing that way, and a diminishing perspective adding to that direction. There's also a lot of repetition of vertical lines. Gary Winogrand would often use this tool in his photographs, and he often combines it with humor. In this case, you've got a direction, everyone looking up at the sky at the Kennedy Space Center, and this woman, for whatever reason, pointing the camera in the opposite direction. So you've got two implied directions within this photograph. Here again in Paul Strand's photograph, there's a combination of leading line and humor. This famous photograph from Tiananmen Square has some real implied direction and confrontation. This man is almost forming a block against the tanks, so you have two implied directions in opposition. This is Gary Winogrand again, and he's really mixed up the implied directions. Movement there, there, this way, that way, this way, that way, way, and just staring down. And then there's also movement in the background. These slightly diagonal lines also then bring a bit of movement to the photograph. This is a good example where line merges into rhythm and shapes. It's Sebastia Salgado's photographs of Sara Pallada Goldmine. The lines of these men think to produce a wonderful pattern. It almost becomes an abstract expressionist painting. In this photograph, it's so much more complicated, but you can follow these patterns throughout. In this case, he's used the rhythm of the mine working platforms in order to draw one's eye into the photograph. This again has patterns and shapes, wonderful lines, repetitions. This is a purely rhythmic photograph. The pattern is being repeated, but it isn't boring because your eye shifts around the photograph and then focuses on the individual men within it. Just to end off the line section, I want to have a look at what is referred to as organic line. These are the lines and shapes that result naturally in nature. These shapes follow their own logic and design. Also, the earlier photographers like Edward Weston spent a lot of time looking at shapes and forms around us that produce amazing lines. There is a convention that they call the rule of space that relates to the direction that the subject within the photograph is moving. 
This image is taken from Annie Libovitz's 1996 book, Old Olympic Portraits. This Olympic athlete is theoretically moving in this direction. So she's left all of this white space on the background for him to jump into. The eye then wants to see where this man is moving. It's interesting in this photograph that she's provided the background detail. So it gives us a window of simplicity and then provides more complexity around. This is another photograph that she produced using this technique. She did it for the film Lemma's Rub. And in this case, what she's done is use this space on the left-hand side of the photograph, which is sometimes referred to as negative space because there's nothing happening in it. She's utilizing the movement of the child's hair, so she provides a dynamic sense of moving, even though the child and the sense of the portrait is one of stillness. I think this portrait of Annie Libovitz herself illustrates the rule of space in an even more simplistic manner, because if you divide the image down the middle, she's jumping into this empty space and you get a sense of where she's going. Sometimes it becomes dynamic if you place the point of interest on the edge of the frame, in this case the young woman on the right. And the image is balanced by this huge amount of white space, and even though the dove is a lot smaller than the woman, the photograph feels perfectly balanced. By removing the bird, there still is a balance to this photograph, because this huge area of negative white space balances the black on the right. Have a look again. I think being fair to the photographer, the image becomes more interesting with the dove. In this photograph by Gary Winogrand, he's again used humour, but he's shifted the action to the right-hand side. He balances it through the negative space with the horizontal of the trunk, and then that's matched by a horizontal up there. I hope this video was useful, and if you missed the first episode on composition, please click on the box above. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well... And find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?